right, very basic code generation. There are a couple of things that I don't like here. Um, the first one is the project name. It always gives the, the project org eclipse papyrus java gem and then the, the model name. Um, but this is something that of course I would like to customize so I will do so here. And the way to do that is to import a profile. So if you click on your model um, and you look into the properties view it will look something like this. If I go to profile here I can apply so-called profile so that's extensions to UML in a way. Uh, if I click on this strange button here, I will get to a view that shows me all the things that Papyrus already knows, or Eclipse in this case. Uh, and I will select the code generation profile and the Java profile. Those things I will need later on. Uh, the code generation profile basically lets me set flags um, to kind of guide the code generation. And in the next view, I just select all and say OK. Uh, and now you see these profile applications here. Uh, and the way profile, profiles work is that you can apply stereotypes so you can decide to add certain information uh, and you can do that to all elements in your model. And in this case I have to go to the, to the model itself, to the root, and apply the stereotype project. And, and you see that here. This is now a project for the code generation um, profile. And this one has a number of uh, options and the important one to start with is the project name so I can actually set my own project name um, and I will just use the same as before and just add code gen in the end. Uh, you could also use the same project name then you just have to make sure that it's actually uh, it's a Java project and so on. I won't go into that here. Um, good but now if I do my code generation again um, I will again get this dialogue that there is no project um, and it needs to create the project but this time it has the right name so I actually end up getting a specific code generation project I can get rid of this generic name here so that's the first thing now we still have a bunch of um, errors here and that is because we haven't defined any types here and the problem is, of course, that types are usually implementation specific. In this case, they're specific to Java. So we need to load um, types that we can enter here. And we do so by going to right click on the project again, import, and then we say import registered package. Uh, there are lots and lots of packages, but we are interested in Java library. And if you scroll down in your model, you'll see that now there are these two strangely looking packages here. Those are the imports uh, and you see suddenly there are a bunch of types that you might be familiar with. For example, the, the primitive types and sort of the object types. Uh, but you also see that there's, for example, no string here. We'll get to that later. Uh, but for now, that's good enough. Um, my age, for example, I can set to be a integer or an int, uh, my date, yeah, there we would probably like to have a specific type, but for now we just choose some random type just to show that this generally works. Uh, for example, I will just define this to be a character, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, and here in the drug we have something that's called the active ingredient, which is probably a string or a relation to another object, but we will just for now make it a boolean. Um, and now I do as I always do, I go to my package, I regenerate the Java code. Um, and now interestingly, I still have errors, we'll see what that is. We see here the Boolean worked, the patient record worked, um, and we'll see what's wrong here. Okay, we haven't defined the name. Um, but you see that the int was at least used for the age. Uh, so now here the only thing that's not defined yet is the name. Uh, and if I would choose something here, my compilation should be error free. Let's just also use an int, regenerate, and that's it. I still have some warnings because I don't really do anything here, um, but that's okay. 
Good, that's enough for this step. And in the next round, we look into things like it, uh, incremental code generation and into more specific things, how you get, for example, a string here or how you get a list or things like that.